Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Saturday Psalm Things with Mots. Today we have a very special guest, somebody that I consider to be amazing in both Old World and New World wines. This is my really good friend, Shannon, and today it's all about Malbec. It's going to be big and bold and beautiful because tonight we're having barbecue and you notice how I did a little alliteration. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to because it's still 96 degrees outside. So I'm going to turn the floor over to Shannon and we're going to taste through these wonderful Malbecs. Shannon, welcome. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to drink some Malbecs with you because A, it's grilling season and B, um, Malbec is one of those super expressive grapes depending on kind of where it's grown and how it's treated. Um, so we're starting actually stateside in Washington. Um, this is Waterbrook Malbec out of the Columbia Valley in Washington. So it's definitely a cooler climate Malbec. The nose has bright Bing cherries and fresh raspberries. And it's just really, like you said, expressive. Mocha, anise, a little cedar that follows on the palate. You get some, uh, some plum and some really nice brightness. It, um, it is a really beautiful, beautiful Malbec and it's so versatile and affordable. And this is the 2019, which in Columbia Valley was kind of ideal growing season. Okay. They, um, they had really limited uh, rain. They had really cool nights. So the grapes were really able to reach peak ripeness before they were picked. And I think this is showing really, really beautifully right now. I think um, for those of you grilling this weekend, um, this would be awesome with something like grilled chicken or um, if you're adding some spice to your dish, I think this would be a really nice, um, that bright acidity is going to cut through that spiciness, make every bite fresh. I like it because it is a little lighter, so you can grill eggplant, you can grill pork. It doesn't have to be a heavy big steak because you don't want to overpower the wine. Okay, All I right. like it. Moving on. Moving on, we are heading south to Argentina. Um, Argentina probably best known for growing Malbec. Um, this is from the Uco Valley okay. called Reunion. Um, I love the label on this one because you see the, um, the table set for dinner. And this is a, um, a family operation. It is the winemaker and his four daughters um, run the show over there. Uh, they're sustainably farmed. Okay. They're committed to not using any chemicals in the farming or the winemaking. Um, and this is a single vineyard expression. I love the nose. It's very opulent. You're getting a lot more dark fruit, black cherries, black raspberries, black berries. And I think as we progress, it's just going to get bigger and bolder and yeah. perfect for barbecue. There I go again. It's smooth, mm -hmm. decadent, a little bit heavier, but not much, but still gripping where you need a cracker Thank to you. cleanse your palate and not have your teeth so <laughs> inky, glass staining purple while you're making a video. <laughs> I love this wine. This one's like rounder, softer, it has almost that kind of velvety texture. Right, right. And what a lot of people need to realize as we go into Le Jamel is that not all Malbecs come from South America. And that's why I wanted to do this, to kind of showcase the grape and how it can be. Grown pretty much anywhere. Uh, you have Argentina, you have Chile, you have France, which will be next, yeah. uh, Washington State, California grows Malbec. It is so versatile and wonderfully, and, wonderfully and priced. expressive. Right. Yeah. I, I love it. And even for those who think 
drinking red wine or Malbec, something heavy like this, is too heavy for the summer, put a slight chill on it. For sure. Don't don't make it cold, but just put a slight chill on it so it will envelop and develop the flavors on your palate and you can easily drink a lot 15 more. 15 minutes in the fridge will go sure. a long way. Absolutely. So. Next up, uh, Le Jamel Malbec. Um, so when thinking about French Malbec, I think you can't not talk about Bordeaux. Um, so uh, Malbec is one of the five classic Bordeaux grapes. Um, this is not from Bordeaux, so throwing a curveball at you. This is actually from the Languedoc. Okay. Um, Malbec, extremely rare to be grown in the Languedoc. The south of France. Yeah, um, right on the Mediterranean coast. That is very far south. And... The nose, big. I'm surprised with this one. Yeah, I think this one was one of the more shocking when yes. we opened it. You always see this on the shelf. It's always usually on sale. They have many varietals, but people cast it off as ordinary every day. This is honestly the first time I've tried this in a few years, thinking that, oh, it's going to be light, T&W, thin and watery, <laughs> but it's not. It is very, I'd consider this very full-bodied. Oh, I agree. Um, great mm. spice on the nose. I like that. Long, grippy finish. Where you need more cracker we need because more our teeth are going to be stained. Um, for those who don't want to cook, um, I think this would be an excellent pairing with a charcuterie plate. Sure. We have half of that right here with our cracker. <laughs> We're starting with the crackers. <laughs> we just need next week to bring in the salami. <laughs> so hard cheeses sure. and sal salami something, for sure. Yeah, something salty that will cut through the acidity and the heaviness of this to just make it smooth and gorgeous and very approachable and mediterranean cuisine i mean we're talking sure. about mediterranean grown wine it makes sense that you would do something like a ratatouille or olives uh cornichons oh, yeah. something even for summer like a, a vichy soie that mm. would pair nicely with this seafood especially something with spice yes maybe gazpacho I love that idea. Yes, yes, absolutely. So that brings us to our last big Malbec from? From Argentina, back to the Uco Valley. Um, what can I tell you about this one? Another single vineyard expression. Um, another one I'd love to point out, the label. This has um, a shell on it. And that is a reference to the alluvial soil where okay. um, this particular wine comes from. Alluvial meaning that it um, used to be ocean floor. Okay. So the shell is actually, you can find actual fossils and shells in the vineyard as you're walking through. It has almost a brightness to the nose. A little bit of floral, I would say. White flowers, hibiscus, something atypical of Malbec, but it's perfume-like, but... I tend to get some violets. Um, from this region. Especially on the palate. Yeah, mm -hmm. wild violets, wood violets. It's... And a hint of sweetness, like right, vanilla. Right. It's my favorite so far. They're all good, but if I had to pick one, this is definitely what I consider a Malbec to be. It's very generous. It's very affordable. It's very tasty. And that's really what matters. And this is your barbecue roast Absolutely, wine. absolutely. That finish for days. Yes, and what's nice about these is they're going to be on sale when you come in, but they're already under $15. I mean, you can't beat. This one's a little bit more, but okay. worth it. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Miss Sheila will put it on sale. It'll be under $15. I am just so happy that you decided to stop by. Well, thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. So to all of our viewers out there, keep liking us, keep loving us. Facebook, Instagram, you name it, come into the store. If you see myself or Shannon, stop us, say, hey, help us pick out some wines, and we'd be happy to do that. Absolutely. So Shannon, thank you again for this wonderful trip down Cheers, Malbec Lane. Thank you. And I look forward to seeing you again with some great, exceptional wines.
Thank Cheers. you. Cheers.